Let's say I wanted to make a solid shape. Now, I wouldn't go taking the brush tool and go like this. Okay, and keep doodling back and forth and trying to get a shape. All this is doing is making a bunch of stupid lines that are going on top of each other and you're never going to fill it in. In fact, when I look at preview now, it looks ridiculous. Okay, and I never get that really total control. Even if I switch it to something like this and try to start filling in an area. Okay, I'll never be able to get that truly done. So now we look at the blob tool. Because unlike our outline view, that looks like a bunch of lines, I can now have the blob tool just be full, below the brush where I can do the same thing and I can make it using the bracket keys bigger and smaller. The bracket keys are under the plus and minus key and I can go like this and fill in an area. Or make some very detailed things. When I look at this in preview mode, however, it's a shape, not a line. So very cool stuff. Again, with this, you know, the, the black and the arrow works fine with it. You know, the black will grab it and the white arrow will go in here and tweak points around. You know, my smooth tool, yes, I can smooth this out. When you get two lines that are close enough though, however, and you go to smooth it out, it kind of looks like that. So only smooths the outside borders real well. So all the same principles as before, just a different way of looking at things. Now, let's double click on the blob tool for a second and get some of these in here. Right now, I have my fidelity and smoothness. Just like before, fidelity and smoothness works the exact same way as they did in my shapes. But here I have variance, and this is built on pressure from my Wacon tablet. Okay, so if you don't see this, don't forget to make sure that your system preferences has under your Wacon tablet Adobe Illustrator in here. If not, hit the plus and add it in and hit OK. That will add that pressure in here the next time you restart Illustrator. So here, if I have like maybe a 10 or a 9, and then I have a variation that goes all the way up to like 7, now when I use the blob tool real lightly, I get this, and then I can also make a real fat line. Very cool designs. Okay, and if I like stuff like this, if I like all these put together just like that, I can go object, group them together. You know, I can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this little thing. You know, maybe I'll shrink it down. Maybe I'll take it and go and duplicate it so I can take and hold alt, click and drag. I can go object, I can go transform and reflect it. And I can reflect it in the vertical, use preview to see it. And look what I have here. You know, I kind of got a start of a tribal tattoo almost. Or when combined together, I have a new end piece. So look, I can rotate it. I can define this as a pattern. I can go into my brushes and look at this one that I already have in here. Can I edit this in all, any way? Uh oh, the spinning beach ball of doom. Whenever you see this thing, oh, whew, yes. And look at this. I can put this pattern now in here as a new pattern. In this case, I would probably make two different patterns. This pattern would be this way, this way, and then I would rotate it around and define it as a new pattern for this one. So right now it's having a hard time understanding this pattern because it's really complex and I'm getting this, speech, this beach ball. 
Okay, I'm going to hit OK and apply strokes. And look at the change. Okay, this is now hosed, which is fine, but look at the cool design down here. Yeah. So that's a way to use the blob tool and your pattern brush tool and bring it all together. Just be careful what you have highlighted, however, because you'll get this jumbled mess and you're, you know, this is probably just one giant stroke. Okay. So now let's kind of look at how we can make more detail with this and what we can do with uh, the blob tool that could be interesting inside a workflow.